race issues, protests, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and now the President of the United States getting COVID-19. Uh, you know, somebody said, well, this is the October surprise. It's October 2nd. Who knows how many more surprises we've got in store for us and, and what their political impact will be. Absolutely. And as far as the president's duties, uh, ability to carry out his duties going forward, many are questioning that and asking about that. Former White House physician Ronnie Jackson was asked about that. And here's what he offered. Listen. He's the president of the United States, and he's the commander in chief, and he's the head of state. So he's still got a job to do. He still has to to lead our country. He'll still have to have a certain number of his staff that are still around him. They'll uh, they'll follow strict precautions, wearing a mask, uh, washing their hands, uh, you know, uh, social distancing. But uh, the president will be required to continue to do his job, and there will be a certain number of staff members, critical staff members, that have to be around him on a regular basis, day to day, for him to do that. So hopefully we will learn more from the White House in the coming hours about what the president plans to do, if there's any treatment options that he is going to adhere to uh, during this process. Chris, do you have concerns after sharing the space with Joe Biden and, and President Trump on that debate stage? Because you were the three, you were tested, of course, prior to that, but then you did take the masks off to engage in the debate. Sure. Uh, it, you know, as I said, there were three 70-plus-year-old men on that stage, President 74, uh, Joe Biden 77. Three old timers, exactly. Uh, am I going to get tested? Yeah. Uh, and, and obviously, all the people, I'll get tested first. And then, obviously, my wife was there, four of my children were there. Uh, and uh, Those are the ones that are ha having the most problems. Uh, you know, over 70. Every, everybody in the hall. I'm all sure three of these men are over concerned. 70. I just want to say one thing sure. about the president, Italy, because my, what happens to me isn't so important. What happens to the president is, um, you know, there's no reason to think he isn't going to be able to carry out the, uh, his duties. And, and we all hope and pray that that's the case and that he remains utterly asymptomatic. The, the point I've made since last April, though, or March, is you can't spin the virus. You can't, uh, you know, you, you can't play with a virus. It's a, a fact of nature, and it's going to take its own course. And obviously, as we hope and pray, the president remains healthy and he can continue to function as the commander in chief. Uh, if he gets sick, then there's a continuity of government uh, plan and the vice president uh, is, is healthy. But, you, you, you know, you, what people say now doesn't make any difference. It, it is, as, to use the cliche of 2020, it is what it is and we're going to, you know, it'll... It'll take the course it's going to take, and we're going to have to live with it and deal with it and adjust to it. And I am getting word, and believe me, we've got calls, emails, out to all all sides, and, and obviously inside the White House, the Trump campaign, et cetera, but also the Biden camp as well. Uh, we are getting word that Joe Biden will be tested this morning. Joe Biden and his wife, Dr. Jill Biden, they have put out a statement, Chris. Jill and I send our thoughts to President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump for a swift recovery. We will continue to pray for the health and safety of the president and his family. And Chris, to go back to another point that you just made about the coronavirus, and obviously that was one of your, one of the big topics in your debate the other night, where this puts that as far as importance, as far as issues for the American people, now having the president and the first lady test positive. Oh, I think it becomes the most important issue, not saying it will be now, but, you know, you've had... You've had the president uh, talking down the severity uh, of the virus and, and uh, saying that it, we, you know, we have it under control, we're rounding the curve, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's fading away. Uh, and, and Biden obviously talking about it as much more of a threat. He was trying to and, calm the nation, you know, let's face it. Think about it, because everybody who comes in contact with the president does take a test. When I interviewed him in July, uh, you take a, a test and you find out about an hour later. So nobody that has come in contact with the president uh, has has uh, has tested positive. They've all tested negative almost every day, I'm told, uh, members mm -hmm. of the staff. The problem, of course, is you can test negative now, and it turns out that 24 hours from now, you test positive. Yeah, I was talking so, to Dr. So Siebel this you know, morning about does, that. Yeah, because he, if he had tested so positive... I, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say, so, I mean, it, it indicates just how contagious yeah. this disease is and how seriously you have to take it. So, Chris, um, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was asked about further contract tracing, testing measures, 
at the White House. And so here's new response from him on, on what that'll look like going forward. We're measuring, trying to make sure we get some additional contact tracing with folks that have been to the White House. Uh, we're watching as the White House is conducting and doing its work as well. So, yeah, we'll, we'll certainly be careful, but we've been awful careful for months and months and months, and we're doing our best to keep everybody safe. As he said that, wearing his American flag mask, um, I wonder how that changes things, too, as far as the optics. Chris, you go back to your point about seeing um, the, the Trump family, members of the Trump family, in the chairs at the debate. They were offered masks, I heard you say. They declined them. And there has been sort of that those optics that have been out there and whether or not those change with the last few weeks here till Election Day. Well, you hope so. I mean, uh, the, you know, I've always been disturbed, frankly, that, that, that people think the mask is a political issue and wearing the mask or not wearing the mask says something about your politics. It's a safety issue. And you, the best scientists in America say, not that they're a good looking cure, group they're right vaccine, there, but that wearing a mask today is the, is, is the best weapon we currently have to avoid.